Let's open some doors and ascend because we're going to add a lot of non-block blocks to Minecraft right now. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we're back in the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're, yeah, we're going to add non-block blocks. Okay, listen, I don't know what else am I supposed to like call them. There are blocks that are not full blocks, okay? There are stairs, there's pressure plates, slabs, buttons, fences, fence gates, walls, doors, and trap doors all in one tutorial. Yes, all of them right freaking here. And we will start by getting all of those ready in the mod blocks class. So we're going to start with, well, basically implementing all of them. We're going to start implementing one, and then I'm going to, you know, sort of copy over a few bits and pops and pieces over here. We're going to have public, static, final, deferred block of a type stair block crazily enough in this case this is going to be the bismuth underscore stairs equal to the register block method with a name bismuth underscore stairs and then a second parameter is going to be a supplier of a new stair block passing in mod blocks dot bismuth block dot get at default block state and then the block behavior properties dot properties dot of and I'm going to do a strength of, let's say, two, and then requires correct tool for drop. And then I'll duplicate this just a bunch of times. We're going to do, do this once, and I'm going to have another one right here with a double over here. So there's going to be two of them. And then we're going to have one that has three stairs. And I'm going to have two more over here for a good measure. Once again, as always, all of the code is available down below, so you can double check it there. And now we'll go from the top down to the bottom so we're gonna have this is gonna be a deferred block of slab block which is going to be bismuth uh slab slab singular very important because well we only have one slab same with the name bismuth slab this is a slab block over here which literally just takes in block behavior properties and that's it we still want the correct tool though and then there you go the second thing, right, the next sort of batch over here is the pressure plate block over here. So deferred block of pressure plate block, bismuth. Can you guess it? Of course, pressure plate. There you go. Pressure plate. And it's going to be the pressure plate. There you go. And then this is a pressure plate block. Pressure plate block. There you go. First parameter of which is actually going to be a block type set. So this is going to be a block, type, a block set type. And we're going to do iron in this case uh, this should be more or less explanatory where well if you choose iron then it's going to act like an iron pressure plate right you can also choose gold then it's going to act like a gold pressure plate or any of the other ones i'm pretty sure then it's just going to uh, basically act literally the same as a wooden pressure plate we then have the block button button block button block over here this is the deferred block of button block which is going to be the bismuth button Man, what a what a freaking sentence. Dude. That that sentence was never said in the history of humanity before. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> There's gonna be the bismuth button over here, and then a new button block over here. No, not, not a new button. Button block. Extremely important that we choose the right class with another one of those block set types over here. Once again, we're just gonna choose iron. The second parameter is going to be the ticks. So this is gonna be how long it stays pressed. And that is, of course, for you to decide. And then here, we also want to call the no collision method because of buttons, and you will find this, if you take a button and you put it on the bottom, it has no collision. Therefore, calling the no collision on the block behavior properties of the button, make sure that that is going to be the same thing. Then we have the fence for keeping things out or keeping things in, I guess. I mean, depends on what you want to do. The fence block over here is going to be the bismuth underscore fence. And it's going to be the bismuth underscore fence. There's a fence block in this case. First parameter of, of which being literally just the block behavior properties. And those can actually stay what they are. Then we have the fence gate. So this is going to be a deferred block of a fence gate block, which is going to be the bismuth fence underscore gate. And here, same thing, fence underscore gate. And this is going to be a fence gate block. Once again, only having the block behavior properties over here. That's not true, apparently. No, it is not, because a fence gate also has a wood type. I don't know why, but that's what it is. Well, because basically, probably because all of the fence gates are made of wood and there's no non-wooden fence gate. So that's why they all have a wood type. I'm just going to put in acacia. It should not matter, right? Even if you have a fence gate made out of non-wood. But yeah, there you go. And then a deferred 
a block of a wall block here. There you go. That's going to be the bismuth underscore wall. Yes. And then bismuth underscore wall. And then a wall block. Because we're going to build a wall. And it's going to be beautiful. And the villagers are going to pay for it. <laughs> Listen, okay? Listen, if you, if you add like 20 different blocks over here, you got to keep saying somehow. And that, that's going to happen with some jokes, okay? So we're going to have then a door block, which is going to be a bismuth underscore door. And there's going to be the bismuth underscore door. And there's going to be, as you can might imagine, a door block. First parameter of which is once again the block set type over here of iron in this case. So this is now going to act like a iron door. I mean, I don't know how much I have to spell this out. Also extremely important for your door block. You want to call the no occlusion this time. Wait a second. No occlusion. Not no collision. No occlusion. Looks very similar. Right? I'm pretty sure that people with um, with dyslexia are going to be like, this is the same word. It's not the same word. No occlusion for the door and the trap door, which is going to be the next thing. There's going to be the trap door block over here, which is the bismuth underscore trap, trap door, trap door. There you go. And then here, the bismuth underscore trap door, uh, door, door. There you go. And this is the trap door, trap door block. Which first parameter is, of course, a block set type of iron again. So it's going to act like an iron trap door with the no occlusion method called. And can you believe it? Now all of the blocks are registered. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Next point, adding them all to the creative mode tab because, um, yeah, that's that's quite important. Otherwise, we not we won't get access to them. There's going to be these stairs. I'm going to add the slab. It's going to be the pressure plate, and we're going to have the button, and then we're going to have three, actually, which is going to be the fence and the fence gate. Nope, the gate. There you go. And then the wall that we've previously discussed, and then the door, the du -du 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 door, and then the trap door. Let's freaking go. Uh, this is all of them. Absolutely. This is all of them, and that's going to be fine. When it comes to the translation, I mean, really, do, do I need to say anything for this? Literally just the same thing as we've seen numerous times now, just for the blocks over here, and that should be fine. When it comes to textures, we have actually a couple of textures. And the textures are for the door, as well as the trap door, as well as the door uh, item. So we have block textures for the door, for the top and the bottom over here, as well as the trap door. And we'll also need the bismuth underscore door item texture, because that is the only uh, block over here that has a separate item texture that's not actually pointing to a block model uh, with and then we can begin by going to the block loot table over here and what we can do is we can say well let's take a look um what we want well drop self is going to be specifically for the stairs interestingly enough that's going to be for the stairs that get over here and then for a whole bunch of other stuff except for the slabs the slabs are actually going to be the add method mod blocks dot slab dot get because here when you think about it we wanted to create a slab item loot table why is this the case well wait a second if you have two slabs on the same block you obviously want two of them to drop and not only one should make a lot of sense and then the pressure plate is just going to drop itself the button is going to drop itself really nice then what's going to drop itself is the fence the fence gate the wall is going to drop itself the trap door is going to drop itself, and then we get to the door. Ooh, the door is two blocks high, meaning we want to call the add method mod blocks dot door, bismuth door, and get, and then a block function over here again, passing in the create door table mod blocks dot bismuth door dot get, and we're good to go. So in terms of loot, honestly, not that bad when you really look at it. Right? That's pretty nice. Then, though, oh, then we get to the block states. And the block states, you'll find actually also not too bad because look at this. We got stairs. We got stairs. So we can call the stairs block method passing in modblocks.bismuth stairs over here. Yes, dot get. And then call the block texture method with passing in modblocks.bismuth block. Is this actually? I want the block over here. Bismuth block dot get. There you go. And that's it. Now, the bismuth stairs are going to have the bismuth block texture. Now, with each of those, you also need to call the block item method, which doesn't exist because that is actually a custom method. I'm going to copy over two helper methods over here. It's the block item method and the block item method, but with an appendix over here, as you can see. So those two are needed so that we actually 
also generate the items associated with it because this particular method, well, that doesn't, it does, this doesn't create those. So we need to create that ourselves. So we want to call the block item method and also pass in modblocks.stairs. And we're actually just going to do this for all of the ones that we need. So there's going to be the slab for which we need it, the pressure plate, the fence gate as well. Uh, the fence, no, the fence, we don't need it. We do need it for the fence gate though. And we need it for the trap door. And this one also has an appendix, which is underscore bottom. So yeah, if if this makes no sense, then I don't know what to tell you. It is it, it, it's just going to be needed. Okay, we're just going to need it. And then we have the item model JSON files that are going to be generated for all of those as well. And the rest, they somehow will generate themselves. So let's see. The next method to call is the slab block method over here, passing in, can you imagine, mod blocks dot slab dot get. And then here, once again, the block texture of mod blocks dot bismuth block, bismuth block. Oh man, can I find it? Absolutely. Bismuth block dot get. And then just literally, we can just duplicate the block texture over here and just add this again because we need it twice. Then we're going to have the button block, mod block start bismuth button dot get bismuth button but dot get and then we have a block texture of can you imagine another mod block start bismuth block dot get yes because they are all based on the bismuth block texture that's why we always pass in the block texture there basically that's literally like all the power uh, the same thing happens for the pressure plate what we can actually do is we could duplicate this we can change this to the pressure plate block and then change this to the pressure plate and you can see very straightforward and this one, we can actually do uh, two more times over here because this is going to be the fence block. Of course, changing this to the fence block. Then here, changing this to the fence gate block. Yes, <laughs> to the fence gate over here. And then here, the wall block. And then changing this to the wall. As I've previously said, all the code is available down below. So no worries at all. <laughs> then we want to call the door block with render type. This is with render type. Passing in mod blocks dot bismuth door dot get. And then here we want resource locations. And this one's we actually do with mod lock over here. Block slash bismuth underscore door underscore bottom. So we actually will do this sort of manually. It is not necessarily the case that you need to do this. I'm pretty sure you could also make it so that this generates, I mean, not automatically, but like more or less. And then here at the last one, this is going to be the cutout. Very important, actually. Uh, and then we can duplicate this for the trap door with a render type here, having the trap door and then only one mod lock, which is going to be the, the bismuth underscore trap door, and then an orientable true. So this is going to be the true right here. And there we go. The cutout render type is needed because the door and the trap door have pixels that are completely see-through and if you have see-through pixels then you need to define the cutout render type over here that's quite important and then those two basically just point to the textures in this case uh, that is why that is needed next point of order the mod tags or rather the block tags here three tags are extremely important the fences tag the walls tag the fence gates tags otherwise your fences will not connect to each other so holding the tag method block tags dot fences and then here, simply adding mod blocks dot bismuth fence dot get. There you go. We can duplicate this two more times for the fence gates over here, where we want to add the bismuth fence gate. And for the walls, where we want to add the bismuth wall. Otherwise, well, like I said, they will not connect to each other. Very, very important. Then the item model provider. Oh, what sweet craziness this is going to be because, haha. <sighs> Three helper methods are going to be sweeping in over here. Those are all available to you down below. These are for the button item, the fence item, and the wall item. Why is this needed? Because the MC locations of the existing parents are nowhere to be found in any of the item model provider methods that already exist. Therefore, we want to call the button item over here, pass in modblocks.button, and then modblocks.bismuth block. Easy enough. And we can literally just duplicate this for the fence as well as the wall. Of course, changing here to the fence and the wall. Make sure to double check this or otherwise also you can go down below and double check it uh, in the GitHub repository. We then want to call the basic item for modblocks.bismuthdoor.asItem. Literally as easy as that. And now we have all of this done.
And the one thing you're asking, what about the recipes? Well, this time, we're actually really, we're looking good. Because what we can do is we can call the stair builder, okay? And what we can say is we can say mod blocks dot uh, stairs dot get and then make an ingredient dot of ingredient dot of mod items dot and this is going to be our bismuth over here. And then we can just define a group. This group is going to be bismuth bismuth. Uh, and then we can say this is unlocked by has underscore bismuth. Makes sense so far. The second parameter is going to be the has method passing in mod items dot bismuth. And then this is going to be a save method passing in the recipe output. And what you find is that this is going to get us the stairs. I like literally just generate the stairs. That's it. For all of the rest, I'll just copy those over. Actually, I won't copy all of them over because usually what you have, you either have a builder, which you can see you basically need to define the unlock by and the save. And then you can also sometimes just have the slab right here, as you can see, right? So this is the recipe builder. This is the normal one. Here on the slab, right, you just pass in this, you pass in the recipe category, let's say building blocks, the output, this is the bismuth slab.get, and then whatever creates it, what items.bismuth.get, there you go. And then it, this just generates it automatically. You can actually see this just uses it over here, as you can see. So save and then passing the recipe output. So you either have the builder where you need to call the save manually, so to speak, or the, the method where you just copy it over. And uh, for the rest, I'm just going to copy it over, but button builder, pressure plate, fence builder, fence gate builder, wall, door builder, trap door builder. Literally all here. Uh, you can double check this once again in the description below as well. Copy this over from there. Or if you just want to use those, you know, literally just type it in, right? I mean, I'm, I don't know, like you can, you can find a couple of builders over here, as you can see. There's a couple of other ones as well. So highly recommended to check this out, but that is going to be all of the recipes. And now crazily enough, this is everything we're going to need. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to run the data gen and you will say, Carbon Joe, why was this so complicated to add all of those different, you know, things? It was not complicated. And I'll show you why. We've just written 77 JSON files. Do you think you can do 77 JSON files in like 17 minutes and 28 seconds? I don't even know if this is the exact length that we're at right now because I, I just know the raw length. I cut out a lot of stuff. So who knows? But let's just say, right, in like 18 minutes. Do you think you can do this? Absolutely not. And you know why? <laughs> oh man, look at the button over here. Look at this. Look at this guy. What is this? This is a button. This is the block states JSON file for a button. Do you now know why data gen might be a good idea? I think this is, you don't need to even argue anymore. You show them this block states JSON file. You're like, you know what? You're right. Absolutely no worries. Have a good, have a good day. Exactly. Freaking exactly. But yeah, basically... Um, for, for any of these blocks, doing it manually is just, it's torture. It's a very, very bad idea. I would not recommend it. Literally just set up data gen and then you're going to be good to go. But now, because we've added everything, let's jump into the game and see if everything works. All right, fans, we're back in Minecraft and let's take a look and you see every single friggin' thing has been added over here. Now, some of them might look a little bit crazy over here, but you know what? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. This looks pretty nice. I mean, maybe, you know, let's uh, let's get this set up. There you freaking go. You know, there we go. And you can see that all works totally fine. The fences connect with each other. I'm going to be real. I think the fences look freaking like they look kind of crazy, but I think they look pretty cool. Same with like, look at this. Look at this. I think the, the textures work like absolutely perfectly for this. I don't know what it is, but I think they do work really, really freaking well. Right. And then, of course, we can, you know, build up over here some amount of different things and you can see easily enough we've got everything i mean that is pretty freaking cool one thing to note when it comes to the fences right if i have any other fence over here yes then they will not connect because these are not added to the wooden fences tag but they will however connect with the netherite fence because that one is added to the fences tag you can see those will connect so just keep that in mind what else? I mean, the button over here. Yeah, let's choose a button. You can see that's one second of how long it's going to press down. And there we go. I mean, that is everything in terms of, you know, custom non-block blocks. Pretty freaking awesome. And there you go. Like I said, I cannot recommend enough just going through the GitHub repository and probably also copying a couple of things over. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, oh, we'll talk about block states. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.